everyone, I'm Rama K. Ramaswamy here with my colleague Paul Falcone with Wellesley Media and we are at Clever Hand Gallery and we're talking to the Clever Hand Gallery Potters today. We're here to cover the emerging artists from Wellesley High School today for their metals and ceramics work. So first we have Remy, did I say Remy, Remy Gold? And um, tell us about um, how cool it is to have high school students featured here, and their work featured here today. It's very cool and it's, this is our eighth year of presenting um, the Wellesley High School show and um, we have the, the potters and we have the um, advanced metal people. So we have jewelry and we have metal sculpture. Very nice. What's your favorite piece? Oh, I couldn't. I just couldn't go there. <laughs> no, I just think many of the pieces are just stunning. You like them all? I do, yeah. So if anything's missing, we'll know who it was. I, I actually have a little, well, a little favorite. I like the cups with the animal handles that Abby, I think, what is her name, Abby Buck, Buckham? Yeah, they're pretty unique. I really like but I like lots of things. Yeah. Well, we'll put you down as liking everything. Okay. Sorry. You're safe. <laughs> That's very diplomatic. Sounds good. Right. Okay. Hello, Anne. Hi. So behind you is your work. That's right. Right? That's your yes. stuff. Your beautiful work. So you're a potter extraordinaire. So give us some thoughts and comments mm -hmm. about the high schoolers work. It's exciting to see their work. Um, they, they're really both the potters and the metalwork people are just using a lot of different techniques mm -hmm. and they're doing it very creatively. It looks like there were a lot of hard techniques there. Ramey was talking about the cups with the bird images on them and just forming those handles is just mm -hmm. takes a lot of control. And one of the other pieces that really takes a lot of control, and I'm only speaking as a potter because because that's what I know, mm -hmm. is there's a vase um, in the window that's just a lovely vase that comes up to a very narrow, very graceful opening. And that's hard to do. Mm -hmm. Is it because of the symmetry? Well, I mean, part of it is it's a very symmetrical piece. And if you're working on a wheel, even with a wheel, it's hard to keep it that round. But it's very hard to start with something wide at the bottom and then pull it up into just a very narrow opening. Oh, I was just astounded when I saw it. It, it just uh, it, it took my breath away. Mm. Both the uh, metal work and the um, and the pottery. And just as Anne, my first thing that drew me was the, that particular vase that she was mm. talking about. And I thought, well, you know, something that happens when you first start is you make it very heavy. And I picked it up and it was light as a feather and it's like, oh my gosh, you know, it's just, just amazing, their skill. So it's a hidden surprise. It was, okay. it was a beautiful surprise. Do you have any favorites with the medals? Mm. I like the shoe the best. No, not the best, but <laughs> the, it stands out, but I think it's because it is so flamboyant, you know, mm. it's just, uh, and then I looked at the other pieces and they are just, so imaginative and it takes so much control and skill to do that sort of thing but like Anne, I'm a potter and uh, that's not my strong suit I know more about the pottery and they did some really great raku wear the the really tall vase in the window is also very difficult because it's the the type of clay that they're using is not a stiff clay, groggy clay that likes to stand up by itself. It has to be encouraged to stand up by it and, and to stay up, you know. So it's, they have learned some magnificent technique. The ceramics class, it's an intensive class, meaning that it's more of like a major class for us. So we um, are there almost every day of the cycle, almost every day of the week and it just gives us really an opportunity to be really free with our own um, pottery making. She definitely likes to give us the reins on it so we can really explore everything that we can. She likes to structure it too um, in some parts so that we have a little bit of guidance and she's just making sure that we're um, getting, getting a, 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 a wide range of um, experience with the different um, types of ceramics and pottery, um, we have to do sculpture sometimes, um, but a lot of times it's just really 
um, exploring our own interests, exploring what we want to do. Um, yeah. I should have mentioned Miss Larson, the best. It's actually her birthday today. <laughs> so um, yeah, everything, all the credits go to Miss Larson. She's a fabulous teacher. She does everything for us. She helps us in every possible way. Hey, tell us about this. Uh, what is this? A pot or what we call it? Oh gosh. Um, this is just a bowl that I made. Um, I honestly couldn't tell you the specific glazes I used, although I think it was a Crystal Forest and Antique Blue that I used. And um, I would say that the biggest part about this piece that I really like, or the two big, biggest parts really, is that it's really light. I tried to throw it as thin as possible so that there would be the least amount of weight because I find that it's kind of unsatisfying or I don't know, uncomfortable when a piece is really heavy. Um, so I like to make my pieces light and I really like the way that this um, lip came out right here. I think that it looks really organic and it goes really well with the um, colors of the piece as well. Um, it originally came from a mistake actually. I The piece was a little bit wet and I accidentally knocked the um, side of the lip and it started to bend and I thought actually maybe I should do this around the entire piece really try to work with our mistakes and that's another thing that Miss Larson tries to teach us that every mistake is really just an opportunity to do something different with your piece to experiment with something a little bit different so um, I would say this is definitely a great example of that um, well, this is both our second years in yeah. metals intensive and um, every term we have a project and we have to follow certain guidelines, but other than that, it's very creative and we're allowed to use whatever materials there are in the room and it's a lot of fun. Um, well, she has drawers of just like either metal wire or metal sheets and stuff and she also has plexiglass, which I use a lot of, um, and that's also in the closets. And she has like drills and everything and we have like torches in the back and it's really amazing. Yeah. So for this fish, the project was actually casting, so um, the fins on the fish. I made a mold out of wax and then we poured um, silver into the molds and that's how I got the fins. Um, this is an angler fish so it actually lights up. Ooh. Um, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so this is an LED um, and there's a wire that runs all the way through the fish um, down to the bottom. Um, yeah, and then the fish is made out of nickel and brass. Um, and then the skeleton of the fish is made out of um, brass tubes. And then the eyes are um, enameled. Um, a few years ago, someone in our class actually made an angler fish, and I really liked it, so I wanted to kind of keep the same idea, but obviously make it my own style. Uh, yeah, there's definitely a lot of variety within our class with everyone's different styles, and then just also what they want to make. Mine was for my term one project, and um, we were all um, forced to, or we decided to, choose um, an artist whose work we would emulate. And um, the artist that I chose was Paulette Werger, and she made, makes a lot of silverware. Um, but I enjoy making a lot of jewelry, so I was thinking about ways to incorporate her silverware style into my jewelry style, and so I made earrings that resemble silverware. My piece was the origami chime family, the bird one. Well, at first, um, this project was part of the silver casting project, so I decided to make an origami uh, little silver bird. And um, so I use the origami uh, bird as a model, and then after that, because um, I want to showcase the uh, silver bird, so I made a mother bird, um, and then a nest, so that I can kind of just showcase like um, origami chime family. Yeah. I do a variety stuff. So for example, I'm currently working on building a metal cheese. Um, with a uh, little mice inside of it and that's uh, a mainly just metal sheet project another thing I also do kind of like painting and a little metal together which is like a Japanese fan that I was working on and other things um, I sometimes do some enamels which is also part of the projects um, I think for now it's like something I do just for fun, but I am like seriously considering um, minoring in visual art in college. Um, well, I'm a sculpture ceramic artist, so I make all my pieces by hand instead of on the wheel. So I just use slabs to make all the pillars and I put them all together and I have a series of three. So the other two are twisted out in other directions. Um, and then I just painted it with these raccoon lines because I wanted there to be a distinct difference between each slab. 
I prefer sculpting and I like uh, being able to control everything that happens to my piece and with sculpting I everything that happens to me I physically have to do so instead of it being on a wheel where you can have other forces like moving your piece around or you can push something a little bit and it'll pull out the other way with sculpture I feel like I have a lot more control over what happens um, it's purely art it's supposed to be like a kind of vase thing so maybe you can put some flowers in it or something um, but I don't think most functional pieces aren't really raccoon pieces especially because I didn't glaze the inside mm -hmm. um, but I think it's just purely decorational especially because I'm a sculpture student it's giving me a lot more time to actually sculpt pieces because it takes a lot longer to sculpt and having that full block class all year gives me a lot more time to actually work on my sculpture and improve my skills. Um, well all my pieces are different versions of Alice, Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland and then Peter Pan so I go for I'm like trying to work with like an after Alice world so like after Alice left and all like the articles are just kind of lying around and being overtaken by nature it's supposed to represent like your childhood, like all like your imagination was like slowly going away. But as you enter adulthood with no new possibilities, like represented by the growing like plants, it's like opens a new door for what you can like do in the future.